Yo, what is going on YouTube? Danny Energy here. Today, I'm going to be showing you the dungeon and kind of go through the methods of how I did the Solar Flawless. Shout out to Winged on Steam. He wanted to see a video of me break down kind of what I use and sort of what tactics I use to do the dungeon. And one thing to take note of on this first bit is you can pretty much do it with any weapon. I wasn't fully set up for this first bit because usually I'd have um, one man cells just so like I could keep popping them and killing everything. But with a horde is literally the god weapon for this part. You need, as you can see, these are dropping the um, exotic ball type things. But you can actually get it so that they just spawn trap inside of the cave. Once you kill all the hive on the outside, the will just keeps spawning inside of the cave. I think you have to actually walk outside the cave for them to respawn again in there, but it's simple enough to do. And it, you just literally pick up the um, the bed and the riches, or high riches, and you stand next to the crystal in here, and it, it is super easy and can be done pretty much pretty much super fast so yeah I do skip a bit of this just because I'm guessing that of like everyone who's looking at how to go flawless knows pretty much the mechanics of it I don't know how I missed that first shot then but basically this room here when, when I go for the flawlesses and they, I'm playing as a hunter I like to use invisibility because you can skip so much and it, it's less risk just getting past most of the, the enemies. Pretty simple. Now the puzzle part is the bit where I'd say you need to be aware because one mistake in here is like an insta death and it, the amount of times people have like accidentally stood on the panels I mean I've done it on some runs or like losing your jump that's why I run a sword as well because I can just switch to the sword and sword out of anywhere just to try and protect myself but yeah I've sped this up a little bit just to get past like the easy puzzle part for anyone who doesn't know the way this actually like I'm showing the full way of how I did it so you can just like follow along, pause it or slow it down by the uh, YouTube settings that you can do. But yeah, this room as well, I pretty much skip all of it if I can. Um, I nearly do a bit of a mistake on the second one and need running to two catch rolls. But we survived so it's all good. I need, as it is, like you can literally get to the first boss really quickly if you just you know if you just steamroll past everything it's like the first encounter where you actually get loot from you can you can pretty much skip that pretty quick or get through it pretty quick you can't literally skip it but yeah I use this sword mainly because when I use it I can like slash forward and get a massive boost as you see I use it at this part in a second it just helps me get across places and kind of speeds it up a little bit apart from that everything else I'd say here is you're running the hunter uh, use your invisibility to stay safe if you ever feel like you need it I always run it just you know it's just uh, one of them mechanics where you can just ignore everything by having it on it's not the thing we're going for this is it's not a race it's more of a marathon they need what I mean by that is like this bit here I know it's safe to actually rush through it but when it comes to like the yoga fights and the final boss I kind of take time on that so I've had to skip most of them parts on here and just show you like what I do because basically each round is the same 
these, these like big different risks on each one, you know, like thralls can come out here. But essentially, it is the exact same thing. I think on this one, it took me around four DPS phases for the boss. Because I was using, like, the weapons that I use, you don't have to use, you can use whatever weapons you feel is better for you. I just kind of regret, uh, regret not putting Vex Mythoclass on because, yeah, having to deal with the shank and everything can be a bit awkward. Hmm. It's the same with this ogre. Um, before I used to run fusion rifle, but I think Salvo's grip is absolutely amazing, especially when you've got your tether because you can just tether, kill like an acolyte, and you can actually just wipe them full of enemies. As I'm, as I'm pretty sure I do on this run. So the best tip that I've got for you for this ogre run is. Think of it as a devil's lair. There's like an underpass bit on the right hand side. You'll see me go to it. I use this spot as a safe spot. It's the best spot that is to stay safe. And it also, what a lot of people don't, uh, well, what I haven't seen people do, is when he drops his cannon, you can actually jump underneath the cannon. To pick it up, you don't have to jump up into the yoga's laser. Depending on what arm you're running as well, if you run like protection against void or solar, you can survive it. Like solar's good for these knights because they hit way less. Void is for the yoga. But as I said, with invisibility, I've got the armor on, so I've got two dodges. It's just way easier. Also, what, what else you need to realize within here as well is I've seen it done plenty of times by others. They use the cannon and they use a full, the full lot of it on the enemies. Which, in bad, it does take a bit longer. But you have to literally wait for the um, cannon guy to respawn again. Where if you keep the cannon up and alive and try and like save some ammo in it for the end DPS phase, the um, the it's not captain, is it? It's the vandal with it. He doesn't respawn whilst the cannon is active, so it kind of saves you getting hit pretty hard. And it, yeah, this will this will kind of explain how I use a feather so. With these enemies, you pretty much just get your super back instantly upon killing them. So you don't have to you don't have to worry about using any of your super up and that you won't have any left for the box. Also there's a few like there's a few different things when it comes to this box and that is when you're using the lame sword like I do. Some people do like three hits and then the heavy attack. I just kind of go all out and I do around like five hits and then the heavy attack. So I feel like you've got enough time to do it and you still like good damage. Like, just looking here at the damage numbers, I've just seen like 107k. Like, that's pretty decent. On the left hand side, you can see King, which is part of one of the mods that I've got on that does increased sword damage. I need having four charge of light is absolutely amazing. So as you can see here, I nearly get him to half HP which, you know, for a solo isn't bad. I'll just skip pretty much to the last DPS phase. As you can see in this one, I needed one more bed and just remember if you if you do need more, these them the maculites that spawn on the outside, I don't kill them first. And then sometimes the yoga does this way, it takes a while to pop his animation. And it, I've actually rushed him before and died instantly to that because I wasn't expecting 
him not to do it. He especially, he didn't do it when I was next to him. So you just gotta be aware and make sure that he goes into that animation before any of the attacks happen. Like, do not push him or pop your super or anything because he'll be wasting damage. So as you see, I'm showing you this sparrow. This sparrow is the best one to use for flawless. You could probably do it on any other uh, sparrow, but this thing it just seems to take less damage, and you know it, it's literally the best power in the game. If you have a arc piece of armor on, and you can have it so it's arc resistance, then that's pretty good. As for the buttons that you press. What you got to remember is these one on the left, but it's got a vandal. So if you can hit this one, and then just ride straight to it, it's what I do. You don't even have to sit on the flags. Just remember, you can drive straight over them as fast as you want, and they're still complete. So you're basically gaining seconds by sort of just riding through it. And why I showed the sparrow at the beginning was it's got the. Um, the less cooldown thing, because the faster you can get back on it, the better. One of the problems is, is they can still destroy this and need, you know, that cooldown. So if you do see a bit of fire, it's just probably easier just to swap it out. And then the sword that I run, I'll show you why I run out at the end because I've had it often where when I land the sparrow, it starts to do like flips. So I just kind of use the sword just to uh, to speed up my process. And that's it, like the, the spur of it is probably the easiest out of this. You just kind of have to learn where the buttons are. When you do it blind, it's so hard. But if you learn where the buttons are, super simple. Now for this next part, I've only shown one of the bombs, like me setting up one of the bombs and doing it into the barrier. And I've done that because I feel like it's, I feel like it's pretty simple. So once you see how it's done, that's it. You can do it with like the exact same four times. It's just looking out for where the server is. It, it's simple. One thing I would say about this area is I do it in this end just to show everyone the uh, the burdens by riches is what will kill you every single time if you don't pay attention because you can kill the server and pick up one of them go put it on there and you can still die to it so you gotta you gotta remember you can go stand back on the crystal even if it's completed and you deposit them into that crystal. Also with Risk Runner you've pretty much got it super easy because it shreds the captains when they come out. It just, you know, the arc lightning that it does just absolutely wrecks all the dregs and all the shanks. There's literally like you kind of feel indestructible, you can just run about, it's just mad. Always, because I've done this, I'm going to say, every time you fire a ball towards the middle, just remember to double check that it's actually going there, and that it's going to hit one of the nodes that you need it to. Sometimes you can just kind of slack off on this and you totally forget that you've moved that cannon. And the last thing that you want is to have a decent run. Miss like two of the balls and then that's it. It's uh, your flawless run pretty much over. Also, something to pay attention to as well, if you kill the guy with a cannon, the cannon does not despawn whilst you're there. So, 
killing him straight away is a good way to know like you're going to have a cannon ready for when you put the save at his eyeball onto the cannon. Indeed, one thing I want to say as well is it's kind of RNG when it comes to pushing the, the eyeball. How bad it weights fell off the map because it just took the wrong angle. But if he does it once, you're fine. If he does it more than that, then you're probably in trouble. Also to note, I believe it's 20 of these riches to do the eyeball. 20 of them, you get the eyeball up. So yeah, as you see here, mobs are coming, I just want to take them all out. Always be wary of the timer on the side, so you, you do get like 28 seconds or something, so you've got enough to push the ball to where it's got to go, even fire it off if need be. But you do need to end up clearing it, because if not, it will kill you. Nice and easy. This was the final one that I had. What? Now, this would have been the daftest idea ever, so do not do this. If that killed, you yeah, know, that's... That was stupidity, but I didn't die, so it's all good. <clears throat> Plus, he is a cannon guy over here, so you don't have to bring a cannon with you. But I always run sword because you can just, you know, sword jump across. You don't even have to use this sword to to make it in, like, be 100% sure. Now we're going into the final boss room. And there's a couple of things that I want to say about this boss room and number one is the weapons that I use it's not the best loadout even though Lament is good against the boss I kind of wish if I went with linear fusion but this is just showing the way that I I did it on this attempt it took me four DPS phases to kill this boss which was a nightmare considering the um the Shank and the other guy that comes out, they're a nightmare to kill. But if you use them at like Vector Mipha class, it's actually kind of quick to kill these. So yeah, just the same as the rest of the video, I've shown like me doing this kind of slowish, just you know, cruising along, getting these first two down where I kind of stand in the area, what I kind of do, how I do the balls, and it's just rinse and repeat every single time. There's no changes in mechanic of mechanics. It's all the same throughout. What you could do is you could switch out your class item at this point and put on the particle, just so that you're doing more damage on the middle things, because literally, the, it's probably more of a nightmare killing them in the middle than what it is killing the boss. So I did use one time to uh, test it on them and it actually did really well. It malfeasance with the lucky pants. It just trumps them bosses up. It's kind of fun to use but the boss DPS for me was kind of whack. So yeah, it depends on how you want to do it as well. Sometimes I like to set up so that I've got good weapons to kill these and then I just kind of farm the axe on the side to try and get heavy ammo. So like I said at the beginning where I was on about like taking it slow. This end part you can take it as slow as you want, there's no what's is it enraged? There's no enrage like the old raids and that used to have. So just be careful of everything. One thing to be said about this shank is I just usually waste the full solar cannon on him because it, it's a pain in the ass to kill when he eats yet is pretty much accurate. Thing. But once they're dead, it's just simple. The longest part of this video is probably just me trying to kill these with an ant cannon and 
the other crappy stuff that I've got on. But it is good di uh, boss DPS with a sword. Also, I did use a sword on the other captain guy down there. Not at this point, I didn't. I think it was like, as it kept going, I was like, right, you know, I'm going to try and get past this a bit quicker. Did end up using the sword. Just a little tip for this guy down here where I've stuck him with the, uh, with the cannon right now. Once you fire it and he charge up to the third one, it will stun him so you can hit him straight away again. So you can always stick him with it. He's pretty good. Probably the best way to deal with him. So, for tips when it comes to the other part, which is picking up the balls which will be coming up to shortly. For a hunter, so easy. Use your invisibility. Warlock, you've got your well, Titan, you've got your shield. The one thing that's going to wait you the most out here is the actual dregs at the back. So what you want to do if you're a Titan is put a shield behind you and just kind of crouch behind the rock. Or when I say rock crystal. It's because, you know, that's, that's probably where people die the most is just trying to put them into the middle. But it's so easy with just doing Beliefs. I don't I don't get how people say Hunter is like the worst class for this because I just think it's the best. Also remember you don't have to pick up every single ball and holy hell I know that. Damn. But yeah, you don't have to pick up every single ball that drops. Just make sure that you kind of frequent they need like this here I'm doing I usually do it until I've got around until I've got around 60 because I think it's 72 to activate it you put 10 in from that first guy you then do 60 boom kind of done in one go then As you see with me shooting the, the ads, you want to try and create as many orbs as you can because for the sword build you want that 4 stack because you're going to be able to hit them with a 4 stack and that's where you want your DPS. So yeah on this one I've, yeah I didn't get a full lot in one go but usually you can if you just feel like going through it you can just pick up all the things to 60 jump on the middle deposit all go for DPS now depending what weapons you use so if you was going for a linear rifle I wouldn't stay in the middle while shooting it because all the ads on the outside this little ledge that I've just jumped on here, you can kind of head glitch that so you can shoot him through that, which is not a bad spot to go. But also, where I'm stood right now, you can come all the way out here and take your shots. But I would say, I would say the linear rifle is smoother, especially if you got Vex Mifa class. Just throw that on. Throw on a linear, throw on like a blandy grenade because a blandy grenade is pretty good. Uh, against like the two bosses in the middle, it blands them, it blands all of the dreads. And the cannon guy user. Now going, going flawless on this. Um, is not the easiest thing to do because of the trapdoor part then you've got the sparrow part which can catch people out and it, you know this boss is um, cannon hitcher so you just got to be wary of it all as you saw that I stayed stood in the middle because I was still I still had that burden on me and if you still have that on you 
it will end up killing you. So you just need to stay on there, get rid of it, go DPS. Sometimes it means that you do a little bit less DPS because you're, you're there a bit later. As you can see, like, one lot isn't bad damage. It did take me four goals though because one of them I absolutely fluffed the damage. But yeah, just here it's not too bad. We get the finish. Lego 